Let's look at some questions that are designed to make you think. Number one. If you had to carry around a pound of feathers or a pound of lead, which would be heavier to carry? What about this question? If you had to carry around a shoebox filled with feathers or the same shoebox filled with lead, which would be heavier to carry? What about this question? If you had to fill a shoebox with a pound of lead and another shoebox with a pound of feathers, which would require the larger shoebox? Don't be like SpongeBob who says, I don't get it. This is hard. Remember, to solve problems, sometimes it's good to draw a picture. Can you draw a picture that represents the first question, carrying around a pound of feathers or a pound of lead? What about the second question? The same size shoebox, one filled with feathers, one filled with lead, which one would be heavier? And what about the last one? You had to fill a box with a pound of lead and a different box with a pound of feathers, which would require the larger box. Right now, why don't you pause this video and draw a picture that represents each of these three questions. So question number one, if you had to carry around a pound of feathers or a pound of lead, which would be heavier to carry? Well, if I put a pound of feathers and a pound of lead on a scale, wouldn't they be equal? So that question was kind of funny because they're the same. But now look at the second question. If you had to carry a shoebox filled with feathers or the same shoebox filled with lead, doesn't it make sense to you that the feathers would be easier to carry, would be lighter? Because the feathers are so fluffy and they don't weigh that much. Well, what about the last question? A pound of lead versus a pound of feathers? Look at that diagram. That shows the relationship between volume needed to equal one pound of lead and the volume needed to equal one pound of feathers. It makes sense that the feathers would require a larger shoebox. This revolves around the concept of density. Density is a physical property that can be used to identify a substance. Density is defined as the amount of matter in a given unit of volume. It's the relationship between mass and the amount of space it takes up. There's a formula for density you need to know, and that is density equals mass divided by volume. Some units for density are grams per liter, grams per cubic centimeter. Density is a relationship between mass and volume. Let's consider these three blocks of equal volume. Objects with the same volume but different mass have different densities. Density is defined as mass divided by volume.
So if I plug in that formula for these three cubes of wood, water, and iron, notice that the wood has the lowest density because it has a less amount of mass in the same unit of volume. Iron, on the other hand, is the most dense. It has the greatest mass in the unit of volume. Now let's consider these three blocks that all have the same mass of 10 grams. Objects with the same mass but different volumes have different densities. Can you predict which of those will have the greatest density? Water, sulfur, or gold? Well, let's use our formula. Density equals mass over volume. Did you predict that gold would have the greatest density? Density is mass divided by volume. Well, what does density depend on? Density depends on the mass of the individual particles that make up the sample of matter. Density depends on the volume of the individual particles that make up the sample of matter. And density depends on the arrangement of the particles within the sample. Let's consider this representation of two cubes of the same volume. What are the two explanations for why copper has a greater mass than the aluminum cube? Their volumes are the same, but why would copper have a greater mass? There are two possible reasons. Number one, the individual copper atoms have a greater mass than the aluminum atoms. And this is true. Scientists know that copper has a mass of 63.5 AMUs per atom, while aluminum only has a mass of 27 AMUs per atom. Copper has a greater mass, so it makes sense that copper would have a greater density. But the mass of the individual components or the individual atoms is not the only factor that affects density. The other factor is the arrangement of the atoms. Notice that the copper atoms are more closely packed together than the aluminum atoms. That means you have more mass squeezed in to the same amount of space. Since the cube of copper has a greater mass than the cube of aluminum, we know that copper has a greater density than the aluminum. Take a look at this diagram. The figure on the left represents a sample of matter that has a high density. The particles are packed closely together and there's not much space between them. The figure on the right represents something with a low density. The particles are loosely packed together. There's more space between them. Can you explain then why ice is less dense than water? On your notes, why don't you draw a picture to determine why ice is less dense than water? <laughs>